There is a theory which states that if ever anyone discovers exactly what the universe is for and why it is here, it will instantly disappear and be replaced by something even more bizarre and inexplicable. There is another theory which states that this has already happened. It seems like the game industry on Earth seems to think that churning out survival sandboxes is what it's for, and for a while that was going quite well. Look at Minecraft, Project Zomboid, Seven Days to Die, Don't Starve, The Forest, Unturned, No Man's Sky, how fucking many are there? Arch Survival Evolved, The Long Dark, Valheim, to name a few of the big ones. It seemed like there was going to be no end to the punching trees to get wood, to get stone, to get iron pipeline, and while some of the better ones have introduced their own little spins on the formula, no game has quite achieved such a different atmosphere and setting uh, than our oh. main focus of today, oh, no. Abiotic Janet. Factor. Oh my god, it's loose. Run, Janet. First day at work, and all hell's let loose. But I've got no suit, I've a decision to choose. Bastards with guns who don't know when to quit. Aliens roam the halls, and for God's sake, the robot security system's on the fritz. It doesn't matter if you're with the research team. You'll need science to make it through The things we've kept locked up here Perhaps it's time for them to have some use From the offices to manufacturing From the pool rooms to the train It sucks that we're stuck here but at least it doesn't rain. Da -da 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 -da. But what of the peccary and potatoes, you ask? A game has to set the scene, create goals and believable set pieces. What of those? Well, before I tell you any of that, let me run down exactly what happens in Abiotic Factor. We start the day as Gordon Freeman. Hello, Gordon. Except in a universe where instead of being inspired by Stephen King's The Mist, we had the entire SCP wiki to work with. Freeman completes his stop processing and is just in time to trap himself on the nearest safe floor being the offices. You are currently en route to Residence Level 7. Due to an active security situation, this elevator will be redirected to offices level one. Capital. So you step out of the elevator and you take stock of your surroundings. The doors are locked and unpowered and no one would hopefully blame you as you spend your first few minutes at your new job stealing equipment, jerry-rigging a power cell, powering the door, and because you are Gordon Freeman, you are seemingly unbothered by the insane amounts of death and destruction you witness in the offices and go about quickly creating a base of operations to weather whatever because you're so clever. The local mall cop is no help. He's no Barney, he's a... Warren, but he does point out that if you want to see the sun ever again, you'll need to head for an exit. The surface tunnel is in manufacturing on level 2, and with that, he sends you off on your way. Now, the offices are a great beginner area. The game doesn't throw you immediately into the world without so much as a packed lunch. You're free to wander around and get familiar with the controls, finagle with the combat with a couple basic enemies, and figure out base building and learn a little bit more about the situation the Cascade facility is currently in. Level 1. Oh, <laughs> are you just gonna eat it raw? Rather <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh dear. <laughs> oh. oh my god. <laughs> oh dear. Are you okay? <laughs> uh, yeah, I I'm fine now. Okay, beat his ass. Behind you. <laughs> send him down, send him down! <laughs> <laughs> I usually build my base around the fountain. You know, it's got an infinite supply of water, it's close to the tram stations, good school districts, that kind of thing. Comparing this start to most other survival sandboxes, namely the forest, Project Zomboid, and Seven Days to Die, it's immediately clear that there was a lot of care put into the first few minutes of a player's experience in-game. 
comparing this start to 7 days to die's checklist is almost unfair. There's a rich journal system where all the little steps you've taken are noted down, and maps for each sector can be picked up from the map bulletin. And so you spend some time wandering around the empty offices, grabbing what seems useful and surviving on like water coolers and snacks from the vending machine. You'll eventually get to the gate to Manufacturing West, except it's going to be closed down. And you'll learn that in order to open it, you'll need to go into the silos on level 3 uh, in order to basically get a power cell to power the door back open. And naturally you make your way up there and this is where the game's selling point comes in. Uh, because the Cascade facility, aside from being home to SCPs, is also home to pretty significant portal technology, which means that you have a lot of gateways to other worlds. You basically go through this kind of like purpley dimension, and which is where the aliens are coming from, and you learn about like the lore behind these like discoveries that the Cascade facility people uh, did, and you progress through it and you exit through like a different part of yes. the facility which then leads you to Flat Hill. You know, Flat Hill is like one of the first places that's pretty cool. It's 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 like a Silent Hill um inspired little town with these skeleton like creatures roaming around. Uh and they're not really killable so you'll have to just like evade them, run around. Um and of course because it's like a town and not, you know, underground, there's like different um, so to speak, like loot, you know, so you can grab like ice cream, like some tomato seeds, that kind of stuff. Uh, I found salt, now we can season our fucking... And eventually, you'll progress through Flat Hill and you'll come out at like the very top, grab all the power cells along the way, and go back into the Cascade facility. These little portals leading into different worlds are the game's standout locales for me. You're playing Half-Life and then all of a sudden you're in Silent Hill and the game can continue to wow with loot, new items as well as enemies to encounter. And obviously there's other places to explore, some far more interesting. The way to manufacturing is clear, and this is where you'll meet the human enemies. And it's not so much that they're hard because they're anomalous or using anomalous equipment, they're hard because they have guns. And so, let me give you the rundown. These people are like Chaos Insurgency. They call themselves the Order. They're a group of militant religious extremists who basically want to just destroy the anomalies, as well as, you know, any science deemed heretical. And because of this, this is where the arms race sort of begins in this, like, level. Because you'll be scouring through manufacturing, gathering all the new materials, and you kill as many soldiers as possible, and you just, like, start crafting insane weaponry and you'll basically find yourself at this foundry uh, operated by like the guy called the blacksmith who's just like he's just some guy at gate and turns out he's just hold himself up in there and you can trade with him for equipment and all that kind of stuff he points you out to where you need to go to the surface tunnel and you head on there except it's fucking collapsed and now you're like ah shit we're fucking shit out of luck right but no uh, there's actually this lady called Freak who you find later on who's like, yo, let's just blow a hole in this joint and get the fuck out of here. And so you do that and you basically head on to containment. But that's for you to find out what happens from then on. And this is another part where the game excels because initially uh, the stuff that you're crafting is basically just like, you know, you take some magazines, you take some duct tape and boom, you've got some... You've got some armor that you, you've just duct taped to yourself. And it feels very amateurish because it is very amateurish. So, But it also makes it so that when you progress a little bit further into the game and you actually have some decent gear and you start actually thriving in your environment, it does feel that extra bit amazing. And you really can feel the progress where you like go from merely surviving on shit like, you know, makeshift spears to really crafting, using your brain, you know, using your mind and crafting actually cool scientific doodads. I believe in you. It, it looks very funny on my screen because you're climbing and then your character just slightly goes to the left and then you just fall off. I, I'm not trying to go to the left, it's just doing what I'm not <laughs> trying to do.
Go. Go, yo, yo. Can you go in? Oh, dear. Yeah, he can go in. He oh, can come in. He can come in. He's coming in. He's coming in. Wait, before we leave, watch. Watch me. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. This is this is my my gift to him. No. <laughs> <laughs> shit in his fucking house. Oh, my God. Oh. I can see through the map. Whoa, hi. Whoa. I tried flipping you. Ow, ow. Help me. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, shit. You're out of bounds? Yeah, I'm out of bounds. Yo. Damn. Oh, by the way, I found the Leic Essence. He died on top of the pillar in our base. Welcome to National Geographic. Today, we'll be going over hunting and fishing, and how you can do both. Hunting in the Cascade facility was not a viable sport until very recently, as your co-workers are covered under the facility health insurance plan. Thankfully, with the advent of total anarchy, new strides have been made in the field of hunting. First, we have the humble knife. Largely ineffectual against most big prey, it still packs a punch against smaller creatures too stupid to avoid getting stabbed. A step up from that is the crossbow. Your colleagues have been hard at work, and this pen-propelling elastic launching device is actually staggeringly effective against the peccary menace. There are a slew of firearms available to gate members. Most of them can be found on the unfriendly soldiers patrolling most of Cascade, and it is advised to take it from them with force. Alternatively, a forklift can be utilized the old-fashioned way to run over most enemies. The force of 9,000 pounds is hard to beat, and our forklifts have had their speed limiter removed for better ramming. If hunting's not your speed, why not try to fish in the many bodies of water? We're not entirely sure why fish are in the swimming pools, but one thing is for sure, they taste fantastic. Be careful when heading to the hydro plant, the snipers have been paid off by the fish, so they shoot on sight. And also, don't get eaten by the thing in the water. The guide says there is an art to flying, said Ford, or rather a knack. The knack lies in learning how to throw yourself at the ground and miss. Let's talk jetpacks. They're pretty sweet, eh? New way to move around, only mildly dangerous to body and soul? Well, there's more than just jetpacks in Abiotic Factor. Yeah. There's a whole slew of vehicles, from the humble forklift to the SUV. They serve different purposes, from mass resource transferring to sick aerial tricks. The whole facility was designed with driving in mind, so most places can be accessed with your four-wheeler no problem, which makes driving around a breeze. So why not try styling on some fools with your new ride? And so you might be asking, why are you making this video? You know, there's an infinite amount of things that you could talk about. Why specifically abiotic factor? I could talk about the serenity of base building, of resource management, of cooking. I could talk about the joy of exploration. But although those are beautiful things, I think the most important thing is that it is beautiful. And I think that you should focus on that which is beautiful. Because there's not going to be an infinite amount of things that are beautiful that you're going to ever see. So the things you can see, the things you do manage to see, you should cherish. I think that... I think that... That's... That's the takeaway from this. Thank you.